Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This, is, this mic is really far away. I think we're settled in. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate each of you taking time out of your busy schedules to be here today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sheila Harris Adams. I'm the regional director here at NJCU School of Business. So we're excited. Um, I'm with the SBDC and we are just so proud to continue to partner with um, NJCU and we're glad to be a part of the School of Business. So with that, I am going to do some introductions uh, of my team. Um, they represent just a fraction of the individuals that are charged with supporting the businesses here in the region. Uh, and then I'm going to ask everyone in the front row just to take a second, introduce yourself to the folks behind you. That would be great, okay? So with that, to my left is Alan Jones. Wave, wave at everybody, Alan. Alan is one of our business counselors here. Then we have Carla. Hi, Carla. Carla Fulon. So good to see you all. Another one of our business counselors, and uh, Melissa Rosario. And she's another one of our business counselors. And to my right, you'll meet him a little bit later, is Akil Collins, another one of our business counselors. He's actually our senior business counselor here uh, at NJSBDC, at NJCU School of Business. I love saying it now. So, and then somewhere, Jazz, the, the little one that's running around doing everything, um, she's our operations person and, and pretty much the one that keeps me off the ground with everything that we do. So with that, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. If we can, again, just take a look at everyone in that front row, if you can tell us who you are. And Sean, do you mind starting? And just let everyone know who you are, even though I'm going to be introducing you later. Hi, so good morning, Sean Ramsey. I am the area manager for uh, Case, I'm the area manager for Minority Entrepreneurship Program for the Northeast. John? Good morning, John Blackstock, uh, New Jersey Small Business Administration District Director. Happy to be here. Good morning, John. Kelly Brodson, I'm the State Director of the New Jersey SBDC, and I report to Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Kelly. <laughs> Good morning, Richard Dahl. I'm the Acting Dean of School of Business at NJCU, and I report to Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Good morning, I'm the Vice Dean for the Innovation of Strategic. Good morning, I'm Donna Grohl, I'm the acting provost at NJCU. Good morning. I'm Wanda Rutledge, I report to the Washington, because I'm the and director of the business program at the School of Business. But transitioning to uh, interim dean of graduate studies in the world morning, we're all going to report to Oh. So, just extended, and I'm so happy to get to be all of you. Good morning. Good morning, I'm the Brian Zinkelman, the regional administrator for the uh, Small Business Administration from the New York, New Jersey, for what we call the U.S. Virgin Islands, and I'm working with you. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Matthew Nadetti, I'm the regional communications director for the Small Business Administration. It's great to be here, and I work with Monterey. Good morning. So, join me in welcoming all of them. So one of the things that I really enjoyed um, was seeing you all network. And as you know, I think uh, that's the key to what the future looks like uh, for the businesses that we serve and we support. Uh, I think the days of us sitting alone and doing our own thing is not going to work. So the collaborations and partnerships that hopefully this organization represents will be the driving force behind making sure these businesses not just survive but thrive on the other end of this pandemic. So I'm very honored to be in this role. Uh, my team and I are excited. Uh, we have a weekly meeting. Um, it's always interesting. Uh, we usually don't like to hang out with each other, but we all love what we do. We love small business. We love seeing what we can do to empower each and every one of those businesses. So we are ready to go. 
So anyone who's here who doesn't know me and doesn't know my team, make sure you talk to us, talk to us about partnering. Let's find a way to collaborate and do what we need to do to support the businesses that we have the honor to serve. So with that, I'm not going to do a lot of talking. Um, I think it's going to be really more beneficial for you to hear from the people we have as speakers today. But please network afterwards. Don't run out. Okay, we'll do the little ribbon cutting. Those of you who have never been to the School of Business, we have, I think we have three students from the Entrepreneurship Club. So we're excited that they came out to support this event. Um, but they're happy to give you a tour of the School of Business. It's a lot of amazing things going on here and we'd love to show you, we'd like to show off our new home. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And we are going to um, welcome our first speaker, Kelly Brosna is our state director for NJSBDC. Kelly's the State Director and Chief Operating Officer uh, for New Jersey Small Business Development Center, uh, America's SBDC in New Jersey. She's excited to be a part of this amazing event. Um, her team prioritizes collaboration through new partnerships um, in support of small and medium-sized businesses. Prior to joining NJSBDC, Kelly Brosna was the founder and president of Colorado Business Development Foundation a 501c3 nonprofit from 2015 to 2020. The CBDF was created to assist entrepreneurial resources through fundraising to enhance counsel, consulting, training, and events for entrepreneurs in Colorado. From 1997 to present, Kelly has been part of the National SBDC program, managing multi-million dollar budgets, assisting businesses in starting, growing, and diversifying their portfolios. She has been part of the National Accreditation Committee that ensures SBDC programs nationally are effective and run uh, effectively. Kelly um, attend, attended uh, New Hampshire College uh, School of Business and obtained her bachelor's degree in business administration. Kelly has a master's in communication and dispute resolution from the University of Denver, a mini MBA from Rutgers uh, Business School, and a certification in nonprofit leadership with Duke University. Please welcome Kelly Brosnan. I was just wondering how I was going to get around to get here, so I went the long route. So thank you, and it is so wonderful to be here. It's so wonderful to finally do this ribbon cutting and celebrating the new location for the NJSBDC here at the, at the university. So I'm just going to say a few words, and, and Sheila is just a, a force to be reckoned with. We are so blessed to have her and her building her team around her to be serving the community communities around here and to serve all populations. Our target really is working with distressed communities as well as working with all businesses, but women, minority, veterans is sort of our sweet spot and we really, really want to make sure that we are providing all of the much, much needed resources and assistance for everybody to be successful. How do you break that cycle of poverty? Well, entrepreneurship is an opportunity to break that cycle. So we want to be part of that solution. I do have a saying, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So we are part of the solution. NJSBDC is part of the solution, and we're thrilled to be here. Just in the past year, you know, and we've been going through some turbulent times that, you know, with businesses and in higher education and all of it, we're all seeing some struggles struggles that are out there, the, the, the beam of light that we see at the light at that end of the tunnel is that we served over 10,000 individuals last year with consulting. We served close to 30,000 people in our training programs. We had 69 million in impact of helping businesses access capital in over 200 businesses that started during some really, really tough times. So we are thrilled, but we can't do it alone. We are here, and I, I know those of you have heard me speak before, it takes a village, right? So we are part of the village. We couldn't be here without NJCU in serving this community in this county. We wouldn't be here without Rutgers Business School, who actually serves as the statewide host for all the programs in New Jersey. We wouldn't be here without our partners, SBA, um, who provides our federal funds that we have that we that we put forth and do the consulting and training. But also our partners, the banks, the nonprofits, the business 
business associations that we work with, we really truly are a hub and spoke model to serve the community and statewide. And, and I know we have some of our partners here that that also provide resources and stuff. But what I'd like to say is that we are the statewide resource. We are the only resource that has boots on the ground, every county that we cover. We're in every community in every location. And we're gonna continue doing hybrid. So we'll do hybrid, whatever people feel comfortable with. So the bottom line is it's not really about us. It's about the business community and what their needs are. And we do everything based on data. We collect the data to make sure that we are being proactive versus being reactive. And I think that that's, that's really key to separate us from other resources that are out there. So I'm not saying that we don't partner with these other resources, but I will say that NJSBDC is the best that we have, not just in New Jersey, but in the, the, in the national program. And we are going to make our mark um, and show how New Jersey does it right. And again, it takes a village. We are hugely grateful to our, our, all of our partners, the universities, the colleges, and our business partners around the state, and, and thrilled to be here today. And again, a big hand to Sheila, and congratulations for today. And, and stay tuned. We have so many really amazing things coming to the forefront, and we're going to be putting out some new programs and services. So it's going to be a really exciting year, and the really exciting couple years, I will say, with the business community, and really showcasing how we can be a force to be reckoned with. So thank you very much. Thrilled to be here, and, and enjoy the morning. Thanks. Thank Our next speaker is Sean, your last name? Okay, Ram Sewak. All right, I got it, right? Northeast Minority uh, Entrepreneurs Area Manager supporting multiple states with a focus uh, on NYC, Washington DC, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Boston for Chase. Um, he has over 20 years of experience at Chase and 30 years of experience in multiple industries including pharmaceuticals, retail, oil, gas, and manufacturing. His team of senior business uh, consultants are primarily focused on advising and mentoring minority-owned businesses. As a key resource for small businesses, the senior business consultants utilize their business network and active involvement in the community organizations to advise, support, and provide access to solutions by helping businesses run and grow their business. The consultants work closely with local centers of influence, business organizations, community development, financial institutions to develop strategies to support minority entrepreneurs to create local impact and lasting, lasting economic growth. They work with SBOs to help achieve their goals by understanding their businesses' focus um, and the key areas that they play in to help them be successful. They provide access to a broader team of specialists in areas such as cash management, credit solutions, and other business services. They are committed to helping businesses gain access to education, resources, financial health, and to help facilitate growth. Please join me in welcoming the area manager for Minority Entrepreneurs Program from J.P. Morgan Chase, Sean. Good morning. So I think I have to redo that whole 30 years experience thing because just to be clear, I was a teenager. Okay, all right. So I'm just like, what the hell am I so that old? Um, so thank you guys for having me here. Thank you, Sheila, for the kind invitation. Um, you know, I took a couple hours to get here. I know Sheila probably took a longer time than that to actually get here. So, um, but again, always a pleasure to be among. Um, my people, right? You know, again, I consider you know everyone in this room and all the people that I have I've seen and spoken to this morning, people who are impacting small businesses, small business owners. You know, you're my people. So I, I really do appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to be here and to share a few words. Um, so again, so I'm Sean Ramsaywak. I run our Northeast team for Minority Entrepreneurship Program. And again, and the Northeast for us extends from Boston, uh, New York, 
New Jersey, Philadelphia, Baltimore, down to DC. And this work is really predicated on the hard work of my senior business consultants in each one of these cities. You know, you'll hear from Nathan in a little while. I also want to recognize um, Josue and Joy, if you want to just show everybody who you are, right? Uh, my senior business consultants for, for the area. So, um, so in the spirit of the work that the uh, Development Corp is doing here and the outstanding work uh, you know, that even Kelly recognized, I want to kind of also give some insight into what we at Chase are doing with, this, with the spirit of going forward, progress, and really making an impact. So I'll, I'll speak briefly on three different things. One being our racial equity commitment, which some of you may have heard, heard about, but I'll share some details around that. Um, our minority entrepreneurship program, which is what you know I'm involved in, and then I'll also share some insight into credit and credit access that we at Chase have actually been part of. So, in 2020, J.P. Morgan Chase announced a 30 billion dollar five-year commitment to address racial inequality and systemic racism within the country. It was a big, bold move, $30 billion over five years. The vast majority of that money is ge geared towards home lending because, again, as many of you know, we recognize that that is the barrier to wealth generational divide. So we have actually dedicated probably close to 80% of that $30 billion towards home lending. Most of that money has already been deployed. Right, so we are very proud about that piece there. And we also do a bunch of other stuff, right? We we build in community branches. We have Melissa here from you know for this area who's one of our community managers. Melissa went to wave to people so they know who you who you are, right? We have community managers in all over the country focused on helping our areas. We are going to areas that have never had banks before. We are setting up, we are uh, we are hiring people from communities that have never actually worked in banks to actually work in our bank and our branches as we expand our footprint. And we are doing this all over the country. Um, we also do a lot of education around financial literacy in these community branches. So again, really important piece behind all of this stuff that we are doing. The piece that I would like to kind of you know, um, stretch on is the piece that we are doing in terms of our minority entrepreneurship program. So again, so as I said, this, this piece is really done on the work of the senior business consultants. Um, the senior business consultants, our focus is one-on-one -on -one mentorship of small business clients, right? Uh, Nathan will go through a little bit more in detail around like who our target audience is. But again, just to be clear, you know, we are focused on existing businesses, minority owned businesses, at least two years in business, doing at least $100,000 in revenue. Um, last year, our Northeast consultants, our 12 Northeast consultants, mentored close to 1,000 businesses, right? So 1,000 businesses. We currently mentor 600 businesses. We had a graduation ceremony for the program because our program actually runs for three to six months. We had a graduation ceremony last week um, across the five cities where we graduated 200 businesses from, um, from our program. So again, the, the piece that I am most proud about is the work that we are doing, the impact that we are having. Uh, when I talk about impact, there is impact that is tangible in terms of we are seeing job generation, increases in revenue, um, some of our clients get in grants, some of them get in loans, there is uh, minority certification that we are trying to support. So there's a lot of tangible, real impact. But there's also a flip side to that. You know, and I know the other consultants here uh, will probably recognize this too. My people are like therapists, right? You know, you know. I have heard from small business owners that, you know, and one of the people that spoke at our graduation last week spoke about, you know, the fact that they changed their lives, and not just from the business perspective, but they listen and they actually be part of it. And I do think it's something that's really important um, for us to really understand that small business owners—they're just regular people also. And they go through probably a lot more trial and tribulations than a lot of us do. And we 
humbly and very humbly accept that responsibility and we are really proud of the impact that we are having on those on those small businesses. Um, another huge part of our focus is on events. So uh, we have done educational events across the Northeast. Last year we did close to 300 events with a total participation of close to 20,000 business customers right across the northeast so very big impact you know again Nathan will talk a little bit more about like what is that what are those events look like and again it's really important again because you know as, as you know as Kelly even talked about partnership is what this is about right you know I tell people all of the time you know Chase is not the savior okay you know we are not the solution we will do our part to be part of it but we cannot do this nor can anyone individual not even the federal government do this by themselves right we all have a part to play and you know we again we are really trying to our best to play our part within that um, so the last thing I just want to just touch on is credit right and loans and access right so we know that based on data minority population specifically black and brown communities do not get the access to capital as other areas right again the data is there the census shows us that it is clear so we at Chase have actually done a number of things to actually try to address this part of it as part of our racial equity commitment but part of it is also just understanding demographics understanding the business world and trying to move forward with this so what I think that we have done is that we have actually taken a closer look and really changed a lot of our underwriting guidelines to underwrite loans differently than we did in the past All right so again and this we have now seen a few months of this again even with you know loan appetite changing out there the reality is that we have seen some very promising results in terms of approvals for for people who are um, applying to us so that's one the second thing that we have done is actually ha we have what we call a special purpose credit program and this special purpose credit program was piloted and now launched and it actually operates behind the scenes based on census data for majority minority areas where if your business is located according to zip code in um, majority minority areas you do fall in a program that happens behind the scenes it's not something you apply for that actually tries to help make sure that we are deploying capital to certain areas that historically have not been given the capital um, the third thing that we are doing is we are out we are modernizing our online process which again should help with how <coughs> the access of loans and the ability for us to impact credit right and then the um, the last thing and by no means least one of the huge pieces that we do it is through the work of our senior business consultants all right they spend a lot of time focusing on this aspect of credit and for us just so that you guys know my senior business consultants and this is intentional they do not have production goals right they do not have a goal to actually sell any product this is intentional in our part so they are different than your traditional bankers right the example I give to people is that if you walk into a branch and you say that you're interested in financing the traditional banker will go through a process and try to get you a loan line of credit whatever it is right for us if that's the outcome that's the outcome but for us we look at it differently we look at the actual business so the answer to the question sometimes is not that you need a loan the answer to the question sometimes is that you need more customers right or you may need to generate more revenue right again and I just want to say that just in context of what it is that we do or you may need to fix your cash flow right you know in that you know in that 30 years of experience I have right I remember distinctly when I was a teenager sitting down with my grandfather and my uncle who at the time owned the hardware store and my grandfather is like you know he is quarreling with my with my uncle who bought a bunch of stuff, right? I can't remember what it was, right? But a bunch of stuff, and it's on the shelf, right? And the argument was, my uncle's name is Sashri, and my grandfather's like, Sashri, why did you buy all of this stuff? How long is this gonna take us to sell? 
right? And how are we going to pay for this? Because this thing is going to take three months to sell. How are we going to pay for this? Sounds familiar, right? We fancy call it cash flow now, right? <laughs> At the time, I didn't even know that there was a word called cash flow. I'm sh pretty sure my grandfather didn't know what cash flow was, but he understood the process that he needed to pay for something that probably wouldn't sell, you know, for thir for 90 days. That you know, and he needed to pay for it within 30 days, right? So I br I bring that up to to close because again, the the reality is that I'm really proud of the work that we do. I'm really proud of all of the work that's being done here. Very humble and very privileged to be part of this. Um, thank you guys for all your support, and we look forward to actually partnering with a lot of you guys in the future. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is John Blackstock. He is the SBA District Director. John, let me start by saying John gave me a paragraph, and I, I, I will say to you, you all, we probably could have three pages of everything that John has accomplished and done, but I, and look at him, he doesn't even want me to read it, so let me read it really quickly before he runs up and takes away the microphone. John Blackstock began his uh, tenure as SBA New Jersey District Director on February 28, 2022, bringing several years of experience as the Office of Deputy District Director with him. Previous to SBA service, John served as the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Internal Revenue Service uh, Services, and the Department of Commerce. Blackstock is also a retired service disabled veteran, yay, who served our nation. Absolutely. Who served our nation in uniform. He is very eager to create lasting partnerships with the New, Jer with New Jersey lending community and is a key stakeholder in Garden State. And let me just say, a pleasure for us to work with, to have him and his team be our partners. It really is a great relationship that we have and we're looking forward to greater things ahead, John. Good morning, everybody. Um, what an impressive panel. Please make sure you network with everybody up here. They, um, trust me, as a panelist, you feel cheated if you get up here and do your part and leave. So please engage. Thank you. New Jersey uh, boasts a population of close to 10 million people with almost a million small businesses. Of these small businesses, many are operated with less than three employees. I'm John Blackstock, the SBA New Jersey District Director, and it is my pleasure to be with you this morning to talk about the past, present, and the future. So let's quickly take a look at the past. So the Small Business Development Center started out as a pilot program, and it grew and became a congressionally authorized program on March 22, 1977. Congress worked to get the Small Business Act signed into law July 2nd, 1980. In 1978, the yearly inflation rate in the United States was 7.62%. The average cost of, of a home nationwide was right under $55,000. The average income was $17,000. Average rent was $260. A gallon of gas was 63 cents. You could buy a dozen eggs for 48 cents. For those that had money, you can get an eight-track player for $169. And during that time, the Small Business Development Center concept became a reality and started helping small business owners and entrepreneurs, which leads us to the present. In New Jersey, there are 11 centers. And across the United States, there are nearly 1,000 local centers available to provide no-cost business consulting and low-cost training to new and existing businesses. Small business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs can visit their local SBDC for face-to-face -face business consulting and at-cost training on a variety of topics. The New Jersey SBDC, the best, <laughs> is the leading, I'm serious, it really is. It's the leading statewide organization in delivering business advisory services and training to established and new small and mid-sized businesses and high-impact growth-oriented businesses. 
at this center, and can you, I mean, really, take a moment. This is almost like the Grand Canyon. I can't imagine what the sunrise and sunsets look like here. But we are fortunate to have a very qualified director. At first, Sheila Harris Adams, she was hesitant to join this team. She really was, and she'll tell you, I don't want to join this team, the reputation. And under Kelly's leadership, she accepted. Now, Sheila will tell you the reputation of the SBDC was not something she wanted to be associated with. But she did if she was provided a canvas to recreate the SBDC based on her experience. And this, folks, this is a pretty good canvas, but this is the canvas I'm talking about, her team. These are, I mean, world-class consultants. Uh, and is she experienced? Uh, well, Sheila Harris-Adams is an industry expert in procurement business consulting. That's one. Federal contracting, labor management, professional services, operations, human resources, and business development. She has a proven executive management track record with over 30 years of experience driving sales and marketing goals and objectives. Her success as, I know, right? She needs a promotion. Her success as a driven visionary highlights experience in the fields of business development, prophetical procurement, contract management, professional services, the list goes on and on and on. Sheila has a diverse experience excelling in many roles, including chief executive officer, which all small business owners are, vice president of business development, director of sales and marketing, regional director of human resources to senior level executives of multi-million dollar organizations. If it is business related, entrepreneurs can trust Sheila and her consultants to guide them so they can make the smart business decisions. So now let's take a quick look at the future. I'm confident that Sheila and her consultants will continue to provide a wide range of resources, not just to Jersey City, but to any, any entrepreneur that walks in and says, I need, a, I need to have a, a meeting with one of your consultants. The vast network across the state provides outlets for business owners to collaborate, to create new partners, customers, and clients. Although counseling creates a catalyst for business owners to pivot toward expansion, reducing waste, and improves, increasing sales and profits, it is one of the many SBDC goals to provide directed services for every individual SBDC client. The SBDC team analyzes every client to maximize the experience to empower all entrepreneurs. If you have not engaged with your local small business development center and you are an entrepreneur or a business owner, I encourage you to do so. Please do before you leave. Exchange cards. So it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Uh, she brings with her a lifetime of experience serving business owners and entrepreneurs. <laughs> As Region 2 Administrator, Marlene Citron oversees the SBA programs, offices, and operations in the SBA's Atlantic region, which serves New York, New Jersey, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. She was born and raised in the Bronx. She loves the Yankees. She has worked for Congressman Robert Garcia, Mayor David Dinkins, Governor Pedro Rosello of Puerto Rico and the New York State Senator Ruben Diaz Sr. In 2010, she was named President of the Bronx Overall Economic Development Corporation and the Business Initiative Corporation of New York. Marlene received her bachelor's from SUNY College at Old Westbury, her master's in education administration from Fordham, and her Juris Doctorate from the Georgetown University Law Center in Washington, D.C. Please extend a warm welcome to Marlene Centrone, Regional Administrator for the SBA Region 2. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm just curious before I start my remarks. How many of you started your business since 2020? Okay. Um, and the rest, 
have older businesses. Wonderful. Um, on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, sorry about the sore throat, um, I want to congratulate you. I want to um, NGCU with SBDC uh, finding a home with a view <laughs> is just absolutely spectacular and inspirational at the same time. Um, as the daughter of migrants, uh, my parents were from Puerto Rico, very religious. They came here for a better opportunity for their children. They understood the combination of education and community and service was the way to go. And you being here, knowing that there are skill sets that you want to incorporate into your passions is your way to success. Know that small businesses, especially here in New Jersey, more than half of the jobs that are created in New Jersey are as a result of all of you. So that small business, one with possibly two other people that work for you, are the driving charge in the economy of New Jersey. And while you may think that your contribution is small, and while you may think that New Jersey physically may be small, know that in any given season, in the year, the state of New Jersey is either the second or the third largest contributor to this nation's gross domestic product, GDP. So you are, every one of you, is an economic engine. So when you're looking to buy things to put on your lapel, in addition to the American flag, see if you can find a little locomotive because that's who you guys are. And you are creating wealth for yourself. You're creating inspiration for all of those that are looking about you. And you are creating inspiration for your children and your family members who basically are saying, whoa, if she can do that, or if he can do that, maybe so can I. I'm here to celebrate with you. I'm here to thank you. And I want you to know that I get to go around, but in my stead, always here, is John Blackstock, the best district director in New Jersey. And it's not easy to help him out because he's self-motivated. And he has a team that because of his leadership follows him without question and is proud to be part of his team. See, he even got a shout out out there. So know that you're in great hands with not just Jen, John, but also Kelly, who last year, let me see if I got the numbers right. Um, you assisted over 10,000 small businesses and you moved more than $69 million worth of support. I was looking for the support that the Biden-Harris administration had given to the state of New Jersey. And I couldn't find the number, so I hate to give a bad number, but know that it was way, way up there. And what was most important is that you used it well. And that's why the state of New Jersey is so economically healthy as it is today. So I love coming to New Jersey. Please find another reason for me to come back again and again, especially to celebrate. If there are graduations, Kelly, I want to be there. Um, but certainly, we're here to work for you. I really meant that. I work for each and every one of you. You need something? John and his team are there. If you need mentoring, we have it available for free. You need a new financial plan, we have it for free. You need, and you need below market rate financing. Who doesn't need money right now? We have it for you with the cooperation of our financial partners and our banks. So we're here for you, lock, stock, and barrel from, from inception to when you become a multi-million dollar company and are ready to do business for the federal government. 
So we need you here to create jobs, but we also need you here to provide the goods and services that this nation now understands have to be manufactured and produced right here in the state of Jersey. So go for it. We look up to you, we support you, and we can't wait to see you at the top. You enjoy. So our next speaker, I'm going to um, do something I should not do um, on his uh, bio that he sent over. He said he's the interim president of NJCU. Those of us who sit here say he is the president of NJCU. Um, so a Andre Acebo, uh, um, Andre is um, a Hudson County native who grew up in Union City, New Jersey and has maintained strong ties in the community. He's only the second Hispanic to serve as the leader of a four-year public institution in the state of New Jersey. Following the legacy of another NJCU leader, Dr. Carlos Hernandez, who led the institution as the 11th president from 1993 to 2012. Acebo is also the youngest known president to ever lead a public university in the state of New Jersey. Acebo has uh, been recognized as a rising star by New Jersey super lawyers, a top Latino lawyer by Latino Leaders Magazine, a top lawyer under 40 by the Hispanic National Bar Association, and a diverse attorney of the year by New Jersey Law Journal. In fall 2022, he was recognized as 2022 Latinos 40 under 40. Award recipient, award recipient in recognition of his leadership by young Latinos in New York metropolitan area. Last fall, Acebo was also honored by the Boy Scouts of America North Jersey Council with the 2022 Good Scout Award in reflection of his service to his community. He currently serves as Deputy Regional President of the Hispanic National Bar Association and chair of the Special Committee on Cuba. He serves as the board, serves on the board of the Cuban Alliance, uh, American Alliance for Leadership and Education, a nonprofit board that serves first generation students in the NJCU community. Furthermore, he serves on the board of the North Hudson Community uh, Action Foundation, which helps underserved members of Hudson County with equitable assets, access to health care and social services. So join me as I welcome the president of NJCU, Andreas Acebo. Sheila, thank you for that overly generous introduction. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. Bienvenidos to New Jersey City University. I have to begin by thanking my good friend Kelly Brozina, CEO of the New Jersey Small Business Development Center. Uh, and Sheila, uh, we're lucky to have you. I, I can tell you much will be said about this view, and it's a multi million dollar view. The lease will uh, show that too. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I got to tell you, the, the view that I've got right now is far better uh, because it's the promise of this institution, right? All of you reflect uh, this institution's mission. Diversity is who we are, equity is our promise, and inclusion is the goal and result of our efforts. And this center uh, is going to deliver on that promise. Uh, as it has for so many years, as it will continue to do so. Um, on behalf of the NJCU community, it is a profound, again, honor to welcome you all here today. I have to recognize some friends in the audience, um, the, the obligatory shout outs here uh, in the back, uh, being a little shy, because there's seats up front, uh, is uh, Assemblywoman Angela McKnight, uh, a champion of this community. I see also my friend, uh, we just connected yesterday, uh, Interim President and CEO of Hudson County's Chamber of Commerce, Sharon. Sharon, it's good to see you. 
a man that really doesn't need an introduction in Hudson County, uh, Nicholas Travelotti, Hudson County's own. I'm going to go a little off script here. <laughs> this institution and its promise is one uh, that my campus is fiercely protective of. Uh, one that I think this partnership in particular helps deliver upon, um, that is indispensable to this institution's mission, just like this institution is indispensable to the community that it serves. New Jersey City University serves the most socioeconomically diverse population of any four-year public university in the state. It's the oldest minority-serving, Hispanic-serving institution in the state of New Jersey. Uh, with a commitment to champion a community of firsts to make sure that they're not the lasts. <laughs> Much will be said uh, of my tenure. Uh, I hope at the end, mostly positive things. Uh, but I'm humbled uh, by the privilege that I have to serve this institution at this particular moment in its history. Uh, for those of you that follow, know that our, our financial situation is one of great challenge, uh, but not insurmountable. I say often on my campus that all we need to do is emulate the resolve of the students that cross our campus every single day. And the challenges become surmountable. Because on my campus, the next Marlene Centron walks. It. On my campus, the next Angela McKnight walks it. On my campus, the next John Blackstock walks it. On my campus, the next Sheila Harris Adams walks it. So I'm asking you to please walk with them because we will always walk with you. Thank you and God bless all of you. That's why he's our president, I'll just say that. So one of the things that, um, you know, I have a great team seated here to my left and I'm surrounded by an incredible network. I, I do want to introduce you really quickly to some of the partners throughout our network. This is not by any means a one-woman show at all. It really takes a village, as Kelly said. Um, since I started in this role, I found that I was surrounded by individuals that supported me throughout the network and getting acclimated, kind of understanding the rules of engagement, which, as I like to say. Um, but I just want to give them a heads up. I see some of, the, some of them ducking, but there's no need ducking, so I'm still going to call out your name. So at State, um, Kelly is supported by a number of individuals. One of our key players is Juan Medina. He's with NJSBDC State. Headquarters. And I also have two individuals who I call my cronies. They have been instrumental in keeping me sane and motivated and making sure I stayed on track and encouraged. Um, but they are really like blazing a trail in the communities that they're currently serving in. And I don't want today to go, um, you know, go past without acknowledging who they are and what they're doing. They are my partners in crime. They are one of the 11 uh, centers that I have the honor to be a part of. And that is Matt Wells, and he is with Fairley Dickinson. <laughs> He is the regional director there and the regional director at Kane University, Rafael Mata. <laughs> Again, those of you who don't know us, please make sure you network with one of us. Um, you know, we are all really the ones that are just leading the charge in support of these small businesses, the women-owned businesses, the minority businesses, the veteran businesses, and the LGBTQ businesses as well.